Hang on to your chimichangas. We're diving into Deadpool. Oh, hello. I know, right? Science behind Deadpool. We all know who Deadpool is. He's funny, he's action-packed. He knows he's a comic book character. Just try and tell me that doesn't make for a fun character. He even got his own movie this year, and the sequel is starting production early next year. Evidently, people love Deadpool. But who is Deadpool behind the fun, magically moving mask? Wade Wilson, an average guy with a sexual lust for like everything, and a love for chimichangas, developed a form of widely spread cancer in his body. In a desperate attempt to save himself, Wade agreed to a top secret program run by some guy who he just met named Ajax. Ding ding. Ajax took Wade to some kind of makeshift hospital where many other mutated subjects were present. In this facility, Wade was given an injection that he was told would cure his cancer. The injection did indeed cease the progression and stop his cancer from killing him. However, Wade Wilson had developed a variety of other abilities. To sum them up, he went crazy, and now he couldn't die. His body would be constantly healing and healing itself, leading to all injuries he received being healed almost instantly. Oh, and his face got pretty screwed up, huh? Shit gives me the chills. He looks worse than that Fantastic Four movie. No, 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 the, the new one. Yeah, that one. Anyway, so he gets his powers from this injection. For those of you who don't know Deadpool's origin, there it is. So, what does this have to do with science? Well, we're going to try and figure out if those superpowers are possible in the real world. They may seem pretty far-fetched, but we're going to see if this is a code that can't be cracked. So let's have a quick little overlook at the extent of Deadpool's regenerative powers. How far can he go with it? He can go practically all the way, that's how far. Deadpool has literally been decapitated before and has reattached the head to the body. Now, while it's impressive, Notice that he does not regrow a new head, he simply reattaches and reconnects his severed head. He can regrow the rest of his body, but his head has to be reattached, and if his head is severely damaged, it can heal itself. Okay, so now we have some kind of cap on his powers. Basically, the only thing he can't do is make a new head. From the neck up, he's permanent, can't be regrown. That's the cap. So, if he can regenerate and regrow basically every other part of his body, how does he pull it off? All right, let's narrow down our possibilities. Let's ask ourselves a fundamental question here, one that will help us kind of get the answer that we need. Wade's still human, so can humans regenerate in any way? And I'm not talking like healing a cut. I mean if humans can regenerate large amount of tissue. Can humans regrow parts of the body? Well, the answer is both yes and no. See, we can regrow our livers, and like I said in the Lizard Serum episode, for the first 12 years of life, a human can regrow the tips of their fingers naturally. However, all that is pretty minuscule in comparison to what Wade Wilson can do. While we can't regrow much else, we have the ability to, it's merely dormant. There's a gene in human DNA called the P21 gene. Recent studies have shown that the P21 gene may suppress a human ability to regenerate large amounts of tissue. So basically, if we were to switch our P21 gene off, and we can do that, we'd be able to regrow and regenerate large parts of our bodies that we can't regrow and regenerate with that pesky P21 gene on. Now, if you look into it, there are some risks involved with this process as well. It's also possible that in the process of switching off the P21 gene, our cells regrow a little too much. Basically, the unsuppressed ability could go out of control in our bodies, creating cancerous cells that grow exponentially. This is caused by the P54 gene in this case. The P21 gene and the P54 gene are linked, and if the P21 gene is switched off, the P54 gene goes a little wacko and can cause certain cells now body to regrow out of control, which is literally the definition of cancer. So we've got a good chance in P21 being switched off, but the issue is that it might also kill the human body in the process. So before we hop off the boat with this one, let's make sure the boat is actually sinking. P21 is responsible for suppressing certain regenerative abilities, but it's also partially responsible for keeping cell growth in check, along with the help of P54. 
However, P21 being switched off actually has another benefit that could fix that cell growth issue. Studies have shown that switching off P21 could also result in the human body paying more attention to getting rid of dangerous cells. Basically, the switching off of P21 may possibly lead to what's called cell suicide, which is when cells that are damaged destroy themselves to prevent that damage from affecting the body further. Switching off P21 could result in a higher amount of damaged cells destroying themselves. So if that were to be the case, could that fix the cancer problem? It's quite possible. These tests have been run in lab mice, and while the possibility was there for these mice to develop cancer due to cancerous cell growth, it hasn't happened. This suggests that the P21 gene does, in fact, make the body more alert to dangerous cells when switched off. These tests haven't been run to humans just yet, but it is one of our candidates for Deadpool's powers. However, while it's a candidate, it's not definite. Sure, there's enough info on it to say that it's possible, and it's totally gonna stand on a list of suspects, but there's not enough info on it to say that it can regrow to the extent that Deadpool can. So, let's take a look around for some more suspects. Sticking to our question, that question being how humans can regenerate, let's see if we can be a little bit simpler. Instead of trying to enhance our regeneration, maybe the secret lies in our ability to naturally regenerate. What's responsible for humans healing wounds in the first place? Well, a few things are responsible for it. For those who don't know the process of healing the body, here's a quick breakdown of it. Let's say you scrape your arm, nothing major, just a small cut. Your blood will immediately rush to that cut to start mending right away. More importantly, white blows, uh, you were wrong blows. More importantly, white blood cells arrive at the scene. Your red blood cells help clot the wound's area to prevent further bleeding, kind of like building a river dam in your body to keep the blood from overflowing out of it. However, a little bleeding is necessary, and so is some oxygen. That's why your parents might have told you at some point that you shouldn't always have a band-aid on a wound, because the wound needs oxygen for the blood to basically solidify its river dam. That dam is more commonly called a scab, and I'm pretty sure we all know what those are. So when the dam is built and the immediate danger is over, the white blood cells kind of take it from there. They're the damage control of your body. Let's say your cut got infected and now there's dangerous germs in the area of your wound. The white blood cells rush over and try to take all of them out. That's actually why you get fevers when you're sick. Your white blood cells are using up a lot of your energy and producing a lot of heat in your body, fighting off the enemy. White blood cells will also take care of dead cells so they don't become a liability in fighting against the disease. And the cells that are damaged beyond repair? Sometimes, they'll destroy themselves. Once again, that action is called cell suicide. However, occasionally, white blood cells will destroy those cells if they don't do it themselves. Is it possible Deadpool's powers come from some kind of amplification of white blood cells destroying damaged cells, and the amplification of red blood cells healing wounds? In simpler terms, does it have to do with its blood count? I'm honestly not sure. There's not a huge amount of research in that, from what I've found. But if I had to guess, while it's possible, I'd say it's probably not what we're looking for. Once again, there's just not enough information to say that a blood cell count is our source of superpowers. Plus, blood count isn't responsible for regrowing our limbs. It's only responsible for healing wounds in the body rather than severed body parts. So, while it may have a hand in his powers, it's not the direct culprit. More like a part of the body that happened to just work with the adjustment. Okay, so we're starting to run out of options. It's not his blood count, that's practically for sure at this point. P21 and P54 are promising genes, but not a whole lot more than that. We don't seem to have any definite answer. Jeez, if only there were some kind of life form that could just use like an example. Like, if Deadpool's powers existed in the wild, we'd be able to tell if those abilities are possible. Wait a second. That's it. There are animals that can regenerate just like Deadpool, even more than he can, and they are called... Snail furs? What are snail furs? It sounds like some weird rug or something. Well, snail furs are sort of like sea anemones. They're basically plants, but they also have aspects of them that exist in animals, so at least in my opinion, you could classify them as either one. They reach out with their little heads, which are these tendril-like extensions you see here, and grab at food to consume for energy. Sounds pretty normal aside from the fact that their heads are numerous and look nothing like most heads, but believe me, they are indeed the heads of these life forms. So what's so special about all that? You remember how earlier I said the only thing Deadpool couldn't regrow was his head? Well, these animals can regrow their heads. If the heads of snail furs are torn off, they can regrow them. I don't know about you, but that is amazing to me. Okay, okay, we've got a pretty good lead at this point. So let's take a step forward into it while we can. How do they do this? How do snail furs regrow their heads? They're able to do this with a type of cell in their bodies called embryonic stem cells. 
Snail furs, unlike most animals, including humans, actually retain the stem cells they develop before they are fully born, hence the name embryonic stem cells. The stem cells come from an embryo of sorts. Now, most if not all animals have these cells, and that goes for humans too. However, embryonic stem cells are lost at a certain point of embryonic development. When we're born, for instance, we no longer have our embryonic stem cells. We only have them as fetuses, because that's when we need them. Okay, so it's starting to look kind of glum for us, huh? Well, maybe all isn't lost. See, stem cells are a real special kind of cell. Stem cells are popular in the scientific field for their ability to do any job any cell can do in the human body. Basically, stem cells are a blank slate of a cell that we are free to write on when we have the chance to. This is done through manipulating the stem cells into a specific kind of cell, like, for an example, a bone marrow cell. This is currently how most stem cell operations are used. They are turned into healthy bone marrow cells and are used to replace the unhealthy ones in the subject's body. Now, what's so special about embryonic stem cells, then? Well, embryonic stem cells are what help us grow as fetuses. You know what that means? Basically, these cells were responsible for giving us every single part of our body. Does that sound familiar? Let's say that in the injection that was given to Deadpool, there are recovered embryonic stem cells. What could these do for him? Since the mid-1980s, a scientist named Ken Munoka has been studying mouse toes to see if they can be regrown using embryonic stem cells from the mice. The idea came from, again, the basis that these cells did the exact same process at some point. It's a process of recycling these cells in all simplification. Munoko's studies came to a result in 2010. He stated that the regenerative properties of mice could be enhanced using embryonic stem cells, and that he's confident the same could work for adult humans. So it looks like we found our answer. However, there's a little bit we have to whittle out just to make sure it would actually work. There's one issue with all this. Specifically, we've come full circle, and the issue lies with regenerating the human head. If Deadpool had his head cut off and he regrew it, would he still be Deadpool? It'd be Deadpool's head, but would it be Deadpool's mind? Or would it be a new person in there? Well, this one is a little tricky. There's been study put into this because scientists are currently studying ways to revive the brains of those who are clinically dead. Basically, trying to bring their mentality back to life instead of leaving them brain dead. When someone's brain dead, their body works, but not their brain. The study is trying to figure out if the brain can be working again, and if so, would it still be the same person? There hasn't been direct tests yet due to ethical issues. However, clinically dead people have come back before, and have remained the same person rather than obtaining some kind of amnesia. One famous example was a woman who seems to have frozen to practically death, but once she was revived, she retained all her knowledge and memories of her life. She was the same person, and she herself had been clinically dead. Of course, that's not the same as regrowing a brain, right? Well, maybe it is. It's the same basis, really. The brain dies, and then it's rebooted. In the Ice Woman's case, it was like a power switch. It's a bit more complicated with that in Deadpool, since he either regrows or reattaches his head, but either way, it's entirely possible that since it's his body, he retains his memories. It'd be more likely this would happen in the case of reattachment, keep in mind. If he had to totally regrow his brain, all bets are off as to who'd be in that little insane noggin of his. So, we know our theoretical power maker pretty much through and through, right? There's just one question left. How the heck do we get this to happen? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You know those bone marrow stem cells I mentioned earlier? Those cells are just injected right into the bone marrow where they are meant to operate. If any of you know what insulin is in diabetics, it works like this. Diabetics, at least in type 1 diabetes, usually don't produce an important substance called insulin that other people produce. So they inject artificial insulin into their body through basically one of three areas, the leg, the belly, or the arm. The insulin cells just know what to do from there, and the same could work for Deadpool's amped up stem cells. They just need to be injected in the area that they work in. So in Deadpool's case, this is likely the bloodstream so the stem cells can travel as fast as they need to to regrow and regenerate his body. So that's it, everyone. We have just cracked the Deadpool code wide open. Deadpool is able to do all the crazy stuff he does with the help of the closest thing to magic that we actually know of. And he's had them the whole time. All he needed to be the Deadpool we all know and love to see get hurt and not die were some stem cells. Phew, this was a long one. I think I'm going to go regenerate my throat from talking so much.
Hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment as for what superhero or supervillain you guys want to see next. This is like one of the most fun ones so far. I know I've said it like three times at this point, but seriously, it has been. I really enjoyed doing this one. This one was suggested by Condog. Go check him out. Go check out his channel. Subscribe to him. He was a great, great suggester. I love doing his suggestion. I love doing all your suggestions. So again, guys, make sure to leave one in the comments. And the video's over and out, guys, so have a good one.